Hey, Greg, thanks for, uh, for taking the time. Um, wanted to know, it seems like ever since Charlotte, this team has sort of been defined by the fact that you guys didn't put yourself in bad positions and, and sort of were able to take care of the ball. Um, what did you see from this game, and, and do you think maybe that not taking care of the ball really was the, the reason for this game? Yeah. Yes, that's part of it. I think uh, first half, uh, again, I don't think we collectively uh, defended the way we talked about and wanted to defend, and we were we were in between things the whole first half of how to get pressure to the ball, how to deal with the numbers in midfield, the two strikers, and uh, for me, we just didn't create clarity for ourselves in the first half, which meant a lot of work trying to deal with possessions, uh, them getting deeper in our half than they probably should have. Um, and you do that, then you deal with more things in and around your goal in your box and invariably you have more likelihood that something can go wrong. And uh, for me, that defined a little bit of the first half. You, you know, maybe you have to defend a couple more set pieces because of it. You don't get, you don't get the advantage in the counterattacks because you end up a little bit in a lower block, lower than we want it to be. So uh, for me, that was part of it in the first half. And then because we are a little bit scrambling defensively, that means on, I believe on the attacking side, we're a little bit all over the place again. We didn't, we didn't really establish, I thought, a clear shape in the first half. It was very fluid, very mobile, but that's not necessarily a good thing. That sometimes uh, creates a little bit of chaos. I don't think we need to be so move so much. I think we need to, to organize our structure better and be a little more patient in our positions. Uh, set up our numbers where we feel like we're going to be able to create numbers and, and hurt them. Again, when you play teams that play in a back five, it's, uh, you've got to be able to be smart about how you organize your numbers. Uh, f flip to the second half, uh, I thought we re organized our defending a little cleaner. I don't feel like they did anything in possession that was really hurting us. Uh, goal kicks, they were just hitting long because we organized our press properly and they didn't even try. They just hit the ball long. Uh, we were able to recover most of the balls in good places. And then, you know, again, we hurt ourselves off of a loss of possession uh, where we maybe try to force one through the middle of the field when building our numbers off the outside and working across was a little more effective for us. Um, and, and having said that, we, I mean, we had some good chances. Mauricio played some great balls across the face of the goal that, um, you know, we'd like to be able to put on goal. We, we had some chances in the second half when we were able to you know, orchestrate our attacks a little bit cleaner and not specifically or necessarily straight through the middle of the field. So yes, to some degree, yes, but I think the, you know, part of the reason for that was the, the over movement and the, not necessarily the, 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 the discipline of the positional play and also just the fulfillment of our defensive responsibilities on a, in the first half, I felt it cost us in, in my opinion. And then looking at Johnny Perez, uh, his first MLS start, I wanted to know how you uh, thought he did. And then uh, you subbed him in the second half and brought Barry on. What were you trying to get from Barry and Jovalich out of that? And did you get what you wanted it, wanted out of that? Uh, so I thought Johnny's performance was, was pretty solid. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, playing against a back five and having to deal with a wing back and, and with more numbers there, he didn't have as much space to run. And that's one of his strengths is to be able to pick up the ball and run at people or run without the ball. And, uh, and it was a little bit tougher given that they had five across the back line. Um, and we weren't as efficient, I don't think, with built creating our attacks in the first half. It was, uh, as I said, a little bit random. But I thought he, I thought he did his job on the defensive side, I think, Again, something that we're working with Johnny is just a consistent execution on the defensive side of little roles here and there. But it became difficult because I, I think there was, a, there was a collective miss, which was making each guy's decisions a little more complicated than they needed to be. And Johnny suffered a little bit from the complication of those decisions instead of just having the simple, very clear references that he should have had to deal with. He had to do more things. Um, the second half, again, I think in transitions and when he was able to build speed, I thought he had some good moments. He was able to get some shots. What I thought we were missing against the five was really kind of like a second forward up there. Um, you know, they in the first half, they were taking Tehran and he was literally just marking Miguel everywhere he went and just kind of locking up our forward. So whenever we were trying to come back across the middle or come into the, into the, the area of the goal or to link off of our forward, it was very difficult to be able to utilize Miguel and their two 
outside center backs were able to release with freedom to get to wherever they wanted to, to get pressure on the ball and to release their wing backs. And so I just felt like we needed another forward to try to create, to try to get the three to really have to worry about two instead of be able to play one-on-one -on -one and let everybody else flow around. Uh, and then I felt like it would open up some actions in the wide channels a little bit more for us to be able to get crosses with more numbers in front of the goal with, uh, you know, more possibilities to, to break their lines uh, and to get some goal scoring chances. Uh, by and large, I think, you know, some of our chances came after that and uh, things were a little clearer as Mauricio, again, we were able to get him wide and in crossing positions. Uh, we were able to get our two forwards and another midfielder higher in spaces where we were able to overload a little bit more. And and I thought, again, we were able to get in some to some spots and create some chances because we created some uncertainty for their back line. It just wasn't so so clear as it was, I, I felt, uh, in the early stages of the game. So did we get it? Yeah, f for the most part, we didn't get the goal. So uh, we didn't get everything we wanted out of it. But I think, uh, I feel like Dan maybe had a decent look. I feel like... Uh, um, Diego came in and had a decent look. Um, probably there might have been a couple others in there. Um, again, not once you're behind in the game and teams are sitting a lot of numbers behind, it's not as easy as it as it sounds. But we were able to still get to some good spots, I thought, and just didn't weren't able to execute to to even up. And the you know the incidents on the goals were again, as I said to the guys, when we some we have a hit tendency sometimes to try to jam plays through the middle of the field and. When they don't come off, they come right back at us really quick, uh, and we weren't able to organize the pressure on the ball. He finishes it in the first half. I don't at the first goal. I'm still not even quite sure how it ends up bouncing in our box, but it didn't really bounce because the field's a little bit soggy. So I think Maya's attempt to clear the ball didn't really pop up. He fanned on it, is what I recall. I haven't seen it, and again, it's just like a, just a series of events. But I think that, as I said, the series of events comes from the lack of clarity that was kind of going on in front of things. Perfect. Thanks, Greg. Yep. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, Greg. Um, once again, thank you for your time. Uh, I just wanted to know maybe if you have maybe more of an update or a timetable on Gaston Brugman and his injury um, after Wednesday's game? Uh, yeah, he should be back. Seven to ten days should be back on the other side of this break or at least back into preparing to get back in and uh, – it's a bone bruise. It's not, not nothing uh, you know, more severe than that. So um, obviously we found that news out yesterday. He's not here, so he's already started his recovery and rehab and all that kind of stuff. So he'll benefit from this break for sure, and hopefully he'll be on the right side of it uh, when we return, as, sh as should Joe. Um, should be ready again on the other side of this too. So this break comes at a decent time for us uh, mid-season. Um, I'm I'm pretty happy with the point total that we have in the first half of the season. I think we've let a couple opportunities maybe to be a little higher go, and I think we've learned a lot about ourselves in the first half of the season that we're going to need to we're going to need to a clean up and b uh, keep using you know as we understand ourselves a little bit better as we move into the second half of the season, which is going to be a you know a, a super important part as we know. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. And last question to Rob. There's one more question. Yeah. Um, so the the team has uh, had three games in the sweep. Uh, you showed us some of the faces like Johnny Pettis today. Uh, gave him his first start. Um, was the rotation product of tired legs, or um, in, in the case of you know Johnny, uh, kind of a reward for his good play in the, in the last match? Thank you. Yeah, you know, for Johnny, it was it's a reward for not just the last match, but he's trained really well. He's He's been really dynamic. He's, uh, I think he came on in the last game and he looked good. Uh, I mean, he's put a lot of work to get his opportunity. It's, you know, it's not so easy for a young winger when you have two DP wingers that are ahead of him. And uh, so he earned the opportunity. So we wanted to also take a look um, kind of where he's at and what he's going to bring as we move into the second half of the season. This was a, an opportunity to take a, take a look at him. So he earned it. And uh, uh, he certainly didn't hurt his chances. I think, again, it was a tough game and, and a little bit of a tough uh, setup for him. Uh, was there someone else you asked about? Oh, no, I was just uh, asking about the team in general, um, ah. you know, specifically about Johnny and then, you know, ah. uh, the rotation for the rest of the team. Yeah, you know, with Jalen, uh, he hasn't played a ton back-to-back, -back and he's about to go to the Olympic camp, so he's not going to get a break in this in this period, he's going to be going straight into another camp, have to play at least one game, if not more than one game. 
Uh, I'm still trying to play long game with Jalen a little bit after coming off the injury that he had. So we rotated the center back again uh, a little bit more with Martin. Those guys have been been rotating a bit. Um, who else? With Dayon, it's the, it's the same with Dayon. He's been had a stop start season. Uh, so again, we want him to come in for the last. 30, 40 minutes, whatever it was, um, while also not trying to force him too long at, at the start, just to, after travel and after coming back from an injury. So some of it is is just management and, and trying to get some of these guys who've had issues either coming from the off season or in the beginning of the season or something like that, trying to make sure we get to this, this break as healthy as possible, but also for guys who earned opportunities um, to see how they would do out there. So uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks, Craig. There's two more hands up. All right, huh? Christian. Last question to Christian. Thank you. Good evening, Coach. Right. Coach, Gabriel Peck didn't have many space today due to the fight this marking. Is the defeat due to Chicago being able to nullify important names in the team today? Thank you. Yeah, again, I think, uh, you know, Gabriel, Johnny, these guys were both a little bit a subject of some of the same challenges. Again, you have a back line of five uh, who was, you know, fairly stable as a five in the first half. I think it was hard for them to find sort of their spaces and to be able to work off of the, the opposition because, again, they just took their middle center back, marked our forward, and now if our wingers played inside, their middle center backs were, were really, or their center backs were jamming them. If they stayed wide, their full backs, their wing backs were kind of jamming them up. So I felt like because we weren't really overloading the sides and creating you know, a certain level of uncertainty, I, I felt like it was hard for our wingers to really to get involved in the possession stuff and be dangerous. And then, it, so their only moments were kind of really in transition. Uh, I thought that was a little bit better in the second half. Um, we tried, uh, we moved Gabe a little more centrally uh, at the beginning of the second half, and then he was on the right, and then he slid over to the left. We were trying to find different areas of space where we could maybe bring him more into the game. So we were trying to find different ways to get him involved. It just, uh, you know, the game wasn't always finding him with the right the right scenarios there for him to be able to execute some of the things that, that we would like to see him. But um, it can happen. All right, thanks for your time, Greg. All right, thanks.